hello students welcome back to all in this video i would like to explain about the principles of metallurgy so metallurgy i think in your previous class you studied about metals so metals having uh, different properties like uh, malleability and ductility in the same with sonority right so when you say metals play a vital role in our life because we use number of metals in our day to day life for example take gold silver so we are using these metals as the jewelry ornaments and for example take the copper iron and aluminum so these metals are used for making conducting wires right and also for making utensils aluminum is used for making utensils and household articles so like this uh, the metals are widely used in our day to day life so do you know how the metals we get which means how these metals are obtained how the metals are obtained and uh, do metals exist in nature in the form same as that we use in our day to day life so to understand this questions we have to know what is metallurgy is it clear so we have to understand what is the metallurgy and what are the processes involved to extract the metal and where we should get the metal we should know idea about it so metallurgy means the process of attraction of metals from their ores which means the process of extraction of metals from their ores so here we have to know one new word the process of attracting metals from their ores so what is the ore ore means what so we have to understand how the metal will be extracted from the ore in this unit we will study about the extraction of metals from their ores is it okay now let us see the occurrence of metals in nature see the metals the human history in terms of materials had the bronze age do you have any idea in our history we have a bronze age and iron age which means the metals we are using from the ancient times metals they started in use the bronze and iron so in the ancient times we are using the metals as coins and we are using the metals to make ornaments jewelry at the same time utensils and household articles and in the periodic table there are up to 115 elements right in that elements up to 75% elements are containing metals only which means we have more than 75 elements among the periodic table are metals so how the metals will occur generally the earth crust so earth crust is the major source for metals so remember this points and sea water so this is the easiest topic but number of questions will be asked from this topic so sea water is also one of the source 
for metals because uh, for example sodium chloride magnesium chloride all those things are available in the sea water and earth crust is the major source for getting metals for example take some metals like gold gold means aurum in the same way silver and copper so these metals are available in nature in free state which means they will occur in the native state why the gold and silver uh, copper will exist in the free state means they are less reactive because uh, they didn't react with any other elements so that is why they will be available in the free state so other metals mostly found in the combined state remaining metals they will obtained in the combined form only because of their more reactivity which means basing on that reactivity the metal state will be obtained which means some metals are less reactive for example gold silver copper so these metals are available in the free state some more other metals for example take sodium magnesium they are having high reactive nature because of that high reactive nature they will be available in the combined form so now uh, what is the difference between mineral and ore let us see so what is mineral and what is ore so mineral means the elements or compounds of the metals which occur in nature in the earth crust are called minerals which means in the earth crust which are available in the earth crust in the nature are called minerals and what is the ore the minerals from which the metals are attracted without economic laws are called ores so ores means the minerals from which the metals are extracted without any without economical laws so the minerals from which the metals are extracted without economic laws so that is called ore but mineral means it is available in the earth crust for example take the aluminum so aluminum is the most common metal in the earth crust it it will be available in the most of minerals but it, it is not economically feasible to extract it from the most of these minerals instead the usual ore from which it is profitable to extract is bauxite which means the aluminum is available in many forms but to extraction of the aluminum from that minerals is somewhat difficult but bauxite is the suitable which contains around 50 to 70 percent aluminum and it can easily uh, extracted from the bauxite without any economical loss so that is called ore so what is the ore for the aluminum means the best ore is bauxite so that is the difference between mineral and ore which means all ores are minerals but all minerals are need not to be ores so that is very important see the minerals are extracted from the ores for example there are some ores and uh, which mineral is mineral is extracted from the ores a table is given i will explain so if you see here the ore formula and metal obtained metal bauxite ore so the formula is al2o3 and 2h2o so the metal obtained is aluminum see from this ores you will get i think one or two questions in your competitive exam so see the copper pyrites copper iron pyrites which means cu fe s2 you have to remember all those topics so the metal obtained is copper 
జింక్ బ్లెండ్ జెడెన్ఎస్ సో జింక్ అప్టైన్మెంట్లీ జింక్ మ్యాగ్నసైట్ సో ఎంజీసీఓ త్రీ అండ్ అప్టైన్ మెట్లీస్ మ్యాగ్నీషియం ఎప్సమ్ సాల్ట్ హియర్ ఎంజీఎస్ఓ ఫోర్ డాట్ సెవెన్ హెచ్ టూ ఓ హియర్ ఆల్సో అప్టైన్ మెట్లీస్ మ్యాగ్నీషియం హార్న్ సిల్వర్ సో ఏజీసీఎల్ అప్టైన్ మెట్లీస్ సిల్వర్ పైరోల్ సైట్ ఎంఎన్ఓ టూ అప్టైన్ మెట్నీస్ మెగ్నీషియం హెమటైట్ ఎఫ్యూ టూ ఓ త్రీ సో ఫెర్రమ్ ఇన్ ద సేమ్ వే జింక్ సైట్ మీన్స్ జెడ్ అండ్ ఓ అప్టైన్ మెట్లీ జింక్ రాక్ సాల్ట్ మీన్స్ ఎన్ఎస్ఎల్ సోడియం సిన్నాబార్ హెచ్జిఎస్ హెచ్జి మెర్క్యూరి మ్యాగ్నటైట్ ఎఫ్ఇ త్రీ ఓ ఫోర్ అప్టైన్ ఈజ్ ఫెర్రమ్ సో ఫెర్రమ్ ఈజ్ కంటైనింగ్ టూ ఓర్స్ హెమటైట్ అండ్ magnetite so in the same way the magnesium is also available in the two magnetite epsom salt so galena galena means pbs pb lead gypsum cas for 4.2h2 for calcium limestone casco3 calcium carnelite kcl mgcl2.6h2 for magnesium so like this the ores will be there and the question will be like this so magnesium is obtained from the ore option a like this given magnesite and epsom salt and carnelite so three ores are available for the magnesium and in the same way for ferrum also two ores two ores are there hematite and magnetite so which ore contains more number of water molecules so here epsom salt will contain more number of water molecules so galena that is lead ore is it clear cinnabar means hgs mercury so like this the ore means it contains number of uh, it contains somewhat more than one or two metals or elements but the metal which is extracted from the ore so that is the ore so this is all about how the ores and their formulas and the extraction of those minerals and now you should know about reactivity of metals so for example if you notice that number of ores already we discussed number of ores and most of the ores of many metals are in the form of either in oxides or sulfides do you observe why all the metals or ores will exist in the oxides form and sulfides form because oxygen and sulfur so these are 16th group elements this family is called chalcogen family already we discussed about it in the periodic table the 16th group elements are called chalcogen family why these are called chalcogen family means chalco means here or forming or genus means produce which means the 16th group family or oxygen family is mostly chalcogen family because they are most of the metals are in the form of oxides and sulfides only these, these elements are called or producing elements so that is why these are called chalcogens is it okay now let us see the reactivity of metals so generally the metals like sodium potassium calcium first category and magnesium and aluminum these metals are highly reactive because the, all these are 1a group elements and 2a group elements 
so the one year group elements and two year group elements are called alkaline metals and alkaline earth metals these are never found in the free state because of their highly reactive nature so generally the one year group elements and two year group elements are very reactive because of the reactive nature they will not be available in the free state so that is the first category and the second category is the metals like zinc ferrum pb etc this type of metals are called moderately reactive so these three metals are called moderately reactive which means they are found in the earth crust mainly as oxides or sulfides and in the form of carbonates is it clear zinc ferrum and lead this type of metals are moderately reactive which means the reactivity is somewhat low so because they will exist in the form of oxides sulfurs and carbonates there is a third category for example metals like gold silver these are very least reactive so that is why they are found in the free state so basing on the reactive nature the metals will be classified into three types so based on the reactive nature some metals like sodium potassium calcium magnesium aluminum these are called highly reactive metals so because of this highly reactive nature they will not be available in the not available in the free state because of this high reactive nature this is also important and uh, the second category zinc lead copper so ferrum this type of metals are moderately reactive so because of this moderate reactive nature they will available in the form of oxides sulfur carbonates like this for example like gold and silver so these are very low reactive so that is why they will be available in the free state so like this basing on the reactive nature of metals the metals will be classified into three types so this is very important now let us see how the metals will be extracted from the ores already we learned what is the ore and what is the mineral so mineral means which is uh, obtained from the ore so now how the metal will be extracted from this ore we will learn this topic so extraction of metals from the ore it is not a easy task it involves three steps so the extraction of metals from its ore is involved mainly three stages the first stage is called concentration or dressing of the ore so what is the concentration or dressing of the ore how it is uh, um, extracted in the in this form and the second stage is extraction of crude material and third stage is refining or purifying of the metal so each stage is involving number of methods or number of procedures we will discuss one by one okay now first we will discuss about the concentration or dressing of the ore so what is the concentration or dressing of the ore see generally if you take the ore uh, the ore generally uh, available in the earth crust right in the nature the ore may contain minerals and number of elements but it is available in the nature in the earth crust it may be contains for example like impurities like uh, sand for example sand and uh, soil clay so the first the ore will be available in the earth crust it it may contain some impurities like sand clay soil all those things so concentration or dressing means simply getting rid of as much of the unwanted rocky materials as possible from the ore which means first this is the first step 
if you find the ore from the earth crust you just uh, clean the ore which means simply getting rid of as much of the rocky materials as possible from the ore which means you have to remove the sand or clay or soil or the rocky materials you just uh, clean the ore by removing these materials so the impurities like sand and clay are called gang so it is important bit you will get in your examination or competitive exams what is called gang gang means the impurities like sand clay soil so all these type of impurities are called gang which means when you this is the first step when you find the any ore you should remove the gang that is the first step then then after we will uh, think the next uh, thing here we should get as far as possible pure and more concentrated ore so this is the concentration of the ore means first you have to remove the gang so that is the first step and there is a second step is there enrichment of the ore so what is the enrichment so enrichment means various physical methods are used to enrich the ore in many cases it is possible to separate the metal compound from the unwanted rocky material by physical means for example take froth flotation process so there are number of physical methods are there by using those uh, methods you should remove number of uh, methods are there by using this methods you can remove the impurities from the ore and we will get the metal so the physical methods are adopted in dressing of the ore or enriching of the ore depends upon the physical properties so first uh, the first step is called you should remove the gang and second step is enrich of the ore enrichment means it is possible basing on the impurities what the ore may contain so there are some physical methods are there i will explain one by one so hand picking is the first method so for the enrichment of the ore so this is the one of the method so hand picking means see if you take the ore the ore may contain some impurities so here the first method is hand picking hand picking means for example take the ore it may contain some impurities right see if you, the ore and impurities are differed by their properties like color or may the size so using this property the ore particles are hand picked separating them from their impurities right hand picking means by taking uh, we are removing it basing on their color or size the ore and impurities may have may not having the same color and size so by using this method we can remove the impurities from the ore and second method is there that is called washing so washing means by using water see if uh, the ore particles are crushed and kept in the slopey surface take the slopey surface for example this is a slopey surface if you put the ore particle here ore this is ore and impurities all are mixing if you are adding water they are washed with control flow of water if the flow of water is there so then what happens uh, less dense impurities are carried away by the water flow leaving the more dense ore particles behind see if you are uh, if the flow of water is uh, coming on this way the less dense impurities are go away so more dense particle ore is re remained here so impurities generally contains less density so that they generally go away so this is the second method this is also one of the best method for removing impurities and the third method is called froth flotation let us see so if you see the froth flotation method 
it is very important method and in this method uh, it is very useful for the sulfide ores which means take the container take the ore or particles with impurities is finely powdered and kept in the water taken in the flotation cell and compressed air is taken into this container so air under pressure is blown to produce froth in water so like this so froth so produced takes the ore particles to the surface whereas the impurities settle down here so this this is called impurities gunk and the froth is carried away by taking the sulfide ores so this is the sulfide ores particles so because of this air pressure the sulfide ores are less dense to so that is why they reach at the top of the container and here the gunk particles will be settled at the down of the container so this is one of the best method to extract the sulfide ores so then the froth is separated and washed to get the original ore so this is the third method that is froth flotation method so if you see here this is the air compressed air so this is the water so containing pine oil so it is very important in this method froth flotation method in the water there is pine oil also added to this water so at the top of the container sulfide ore particles are reached at the top and at the bottom of the container there is a gunk so this is all about the froth flotation method in this method sulfide ores are purified froth flotation method so already we discussed in this method mainly the sulfide ores are purified by this method right so if you take this so here while pouring the ore particles plus water so in this method the froth bubbles carrying the sulfide ores at the top of the container so these are the sulfide ores so here one more point in this to the water pine oil is also added so it is very important so if you see your previous question papers there will be a question on this froth flotation process which ores are purified in this method so nothing but sulfide ores in the froth flotation method which oil is added so pine oil is added so at the bottom of the container there is a gong is settled here so this is the froth flotation method one of the best method and important method and in the concentration or dressing of the ore there is one more method is there for the refining of the ore that is magnetic separation method so if you see here this is the magnetic separation method see if the ore is or the if you see if your ore or the impurity one of them is having the magnetic substances the other then is non magnetic see in this method if one of the substance whether the ore or the impurity whatever it may be one of them is magnetic and the other one is non magnetic then those substances are separated by using electromagnetics so that is magnetic separation method so in this method there are magnetic wheel is there and no non magnetic wheel is there so here it is a moving belt see the belt is moving in this way if the ore is ore powder is poured here then it will be moving in this way along the belt the magnetic sub, uh, magnetic substance is deposit here and non magnetic substance is deposited the non magnetic wheel so like this the non magnetic ore and magnetic ore is separated in this way is it okay so by using this electromagnetic uh, separation method the ore and the impurities will be separated by using this magnetic separation which means one of must contain magnetic substance and the other the other one may be non magnetic 
so then only this method is useful so these are what we have discussed uh, concentration or dressing of the ore which means in the first process we have to remove the impurities by using different methods like hand picking washing froth flotation and magnetic substance so in the next video we will discuss about the extraction of crude metal which means how the crude metal will be extracted from the ore we will discuss in the next video thank you